Now some people wonder why I went to Mexico to the chaos and the noise. Well, it's easy. It was just to prepare me for something even more scary. An RV show. Late winter in Canada is the time when most people yearn for spring. So they brave the crowds for a peek at what's new in recreational vehicles. It's not for the faint of heart, especially if you're not crazy about concrete, bright lights and country music. But it does give me a chance to see some of the trailers my viewers have suggested as I look for a new camper. Now I got to admit, I'm a little biased. I, uh, I know what I want, and so you could kind of call me like a RV snob. I'm a minimalist. I don't like glamping. Uh, you know, I'm looking for a particular type of trailer. So when I go out to places like this, um, yeah, there's some things I just won't look at. It's just not my interest. I know what I'm looking for. And I think if you've watched my past videos, you have a good idea as what I look for to be one with nature. I like little trailers that actually go into the wilderness. Not planning on being camped in a casino parking lot. So, yeah. Braving the gauntlet of metal and fiberglass towers, I finally spotted something a little closer to my size and budget. It was called a Bushwhacker Plus by Braxton Creek of Indiana. It's the classic teardrop design, but one with enough height to stand up in. There was even a Mickey Mouse version. But what really counts is what's inside. Now this is comfortable. It's small, um, it's simple, it's basic. You've got, uh, you've got benches and you've got a table that come down, they collapse into a bed. You've got lights, you've got refrigerator, radio, air conditioner, not something I'd need, but some people need an air conditioner. But look over here. You have a toilet and a shower. You don't have to shower outside. That is a real bonus. An indoor shower is pretty well an essential for a four-season traveler. One thing that's really important with small compact campers like this is the use of space. Everything has to be multifunctional. And what I really like is this kitchen area because with the stove lid down, you've actually got this full counter area you can work with and you can actually use it as a cutting board. But when it comes up, you've got a two burner stove. That's what makes it multifunction. Also essential is storage space, and the kitchenette has two cabinets below. And a little space up top. It's very basic and it's compact, but to me, it works. Weighing in at around 1,900 pounds, 15 and a half feet long, and around $12,500 US, it's a good choice for those that don't need much space to camp. Now one trailer that was mentioned by several people is the R-Pod by Forest River. At around 2,500 pounds dry weight and 18 and a half feet in length, it was too big for my tow vehicle, but no harm in checking out its features. It was certainly roomier than the smaller teardrops and featured bunk beds, a shower with toilet and sink, a big three-way fridge, microwave, and a comfortable sitting area. The kitchen had a recessed two-burner stove and sink, with plenty of drawer space underneath. There's also a cabinet above the kitchenette for more storage. I believe the one I saw was a 2019 version for only 19,000 Canadian or 14,000 US. One little camper that really seemed unique was the Cricket by Taxa. 
At 1,800 pounds and only 15 feet long, it's also very low profile when being towed as the roof pops up for the increased headroom when camping. It certainly fit the bill for being compact and lightweight. The inside was pretty utilitarian, however, looking more like a portable mash unit than a family trailer. I suspect the fabric sides would lose heat in frigid temperatures, so it's probably better for summer use. Designed by a NASA engineer, the sticker price was out of this world in my opinion. Even at the RV show special price of 41,900 Canadian, this was certainly beyond my reach. However, I do appreciate quality. Two teardrops I was already familiar with are the Tab and the Tag by Newcamp. I've had the pleasure of seeing the Tab up close and personal several times at camp and was quite impressed. And it was artist Georgia Mann who introduced me to the Tag a couple of years ago. The indoor lights do not flatter these fine trailers, but they really show their true colors outdoors. This is the Tab Boondock Edge 320S, a meticulously well-designed trailer that lives up to New Camp's solid reputation. They prefer to call this a clamshell design. With aluminum wrap and bonded fiberglass exterior, it makes it incredibly well insulated and weather resistant and also wind resistant when traveling. The interior is smartly arranged and spacious. A convertible lounge and table area is also a large bed with storage space overhead. The indoor shower and toilet has a frosted door to make it feel less cramped. The kitchen area has a large sink, two burner stove, fridge and plenty of storage space. Plus a big front window that actually opens up. But don't let me forget the heating advantage of the tab. With its Aldi hydronic system, it actually heats up the floor. Weighing in at just under 1,800 pounds dry weight, it's just over 15 feet long. Is it pricey? Yes, retailing over 31,000 US dollars. But a trailer that's as well built as this one is, will last a long time and will be a good investment. Also from New Camp are the mini line of tag trailers. This is the Tag Edge XL model, which retails around 22,000 US dollars. Compact and lightweight, but a little too small for my purposes. But please check out my video, The Desert and the Artist, for a better perspective on this popular mini camper. If you're looking for a low budget alternative to the Tag, perhaps this Bear Paw may be worth checking out. It's a rear kitchen style mini teardrop made by Braxton Creek in Indiana. Inside has a cozy sleeping area heated with a 12,000 BTU furnace. There's also front and rear overhead storage and an air conditioner. I'm not sure what the US retail price is, but this one had a show price of only 13,000 Canadian which is about 9,800 US dollars. There were other crouch down style teardrops in the show, but the prices were higher and I didn't see any advantages over the two that I'd already mentioned. But it doesn't stop me from looking around and seeing what the rest of the world likes is everybody has their own tastes. Like this Nobo, short for No Boundaries. With a tent on top to sleep in, it was really a toy hauler disguised as a trailer. Also of little appeal to me was this toy hauler named a Flyer Pursue. The slide-out stove and fridge meant you could only use the kitchen outdoors, making it a challenge for rain, cold, and wind. The inside was only 3 feet 9 inches high, meaning it was really just for sleeping, or simply storing an ATV or a motorcycle. Sorry Intech, not practical for me. 
When I visited the new camp trailers, there was something of interest on the opposite side. It was the Airstream section. This is the rear end entrance of the Base Camp 16X. Much more than a toy hauler, this had a full interior height of 6 foot 4 inches and a length of just over 16 feet. A little too glampy for my style, but the design was actually quite practical. Lots of lounging or sleeping room, an adequate shower, plus a kitchen made for either a cook or an airline pilot. No need to ask the price, I think you already know it's in the luxury category of small trailers. This Saul seemed to cater more to the Star Wars fan than a nature lover and has my vote for the trailer that'll never likely see a gravel back road. These are for show. All you can do and, and all you can assess on is by talking to the salesman, walking around in it, um, getting the feeling, but you have no idea what it's going to be like to camp in. And that's the challenge going into big shows like this. But for ideas, it's the perfect place to go. It's warm, you see a variety of things, and you might even get ideas you've never even thought of. Being inspired is a good thing, but finding out how well a trailer performs can only be done by heading outdoors. I think you already know my appreciation of the A-frame style trailer. It's one I've had a lot of experience with and has a large following of outdoor enthusiasts. I see a lot of them in my travels, like this Flagstaff Classic in Colorado. This is how a trailer should be assessed, where it is being used. No salesman here, just a couple of happy campers getting ready to enjoy a peaceful forest sleepout. Back at the show, however, there is only one A-frame, a Rockwood Premier A122S. Now this was a camper. It feels it belongs in the woods like a tent. But with the benefits of a hard insulated interior and a compact fold-down design. Do I really have to sell you on this concept? The show price was around 20,000 Canadian but you can typically find it in the US for around 13 grand. But it was time for me to leave the thumping drone of pop country and check out other alternatives outside the show halls. So this is kind of the exact opposite of the way I want to find out about a trailer. It's with a lot of people and then loud noise and something that's totally away from the natural areas. I'd like to try a trailer out in the forest, not in a big arena, and that's one of the challenges you get when you're looking for an RV. You have to come to these, it's the only way you're going to see what's out there, but it's kind of limited as to what you're really going to find. You can get some ideas, but the best way is not to talk to salesmen, it's to talk to people that have actually camped with some of these trailers. RV shows are a great starting point for finding the right trailer to suit each person's camping needs. But for me, the best inspiration was the outdoors, those campgrounds and wilderness areas I love to travel in. That's where the real campers are, and they're usually more than happy to share their joys of their favorite trailer with you. I know a lot of people want to know what my new trailer is, and I've really made you wait. But I wanted to make sure everybody understood why I chose the new trailer in the first place. But I guess that'll be the next video. I hope you enjoyed this, and check out my other travels as well.